I'm in New Zealand. My biggest fear for your heights. They have one of those giant space needles. And I was like, I'm going to jump off that needle. And my buddy Heath, who was showing me around, I go, Heath, I'm jumping off that needle. He was like, I'll go with you. Fucking great. So we go down there. And I walk into the office and I ask the woman, I go, what's the deal? She goes, okay, it's 700 feet straight up, 16 second fall, and then it's over. I was like, it's over? <laughs> And she said, the jump is over. I go, that's what, you, that's what you should say. You should say the jump is over. I just shit a little bit for no reason. You know what I mean? So, I said, what, what's the deal? I'd like to see someone jump. When, when's that going to happen? She said, half hour. Do you want to wait? Scared of heights, people. You know what we're not doing? Standing next to that fucking needle for 30 minutes. No way. Because then I'm never going to jump. Right? I just need to, it needs to be a last second. I go under. I go, no, no, I'll come back. And she said, okay. But I left, dude with every intention of never coming back. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, the only reason I didn't just flat out not go back, I didn't want to come up with the reason not to jump because I felt like that would make me a pussy. But if somebody else came up with the idea, I could just go, yeah, you're probably right. I probably shouldn't jump, right? And who's gonna give me that idea? My wife. I call her on the phone. I go, hey, babe. She goes, hey. She said, you near that needle? I said, I am. And before I could say anything else, she said, hey, please don't puss out. <laughs> and I said, what? She goes, I know you're calling me, so I'll give you a reason not to jump. I'm, I'm not going to do that. And she said, I know you, and I know the only way you get disappointed in yourself, and this is true, is when you don't try. When you feel like you quit, and you hold on to that shit for a long time. And she said, I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want you to hang on to this for months. So please, just jump. And I told her, I go, babe, thank you very much. It's cool to be married to somebody who knows me so well. So I appreciate you looking out for me. And she said, I, I didn't tell you that for you. <laughs> I said, what? She goes, you know, when you hang on to it, you know what you do? Talk about it all the time. <laughs> she goes, I don't want to hear you for the next three months. I should have jumped, you know, I should have jumped. I should have jumped, you know, I should have jumped. <laughs> she said, so just jump. And I go, okay. And I hang up the phone. And guys, here's how you know I'm scared. When, when you see me super confident, extra bravado, I'm frightened. That's how, like, I, that's what my alter ego is for my fear. This is how scared I was. This is how much bravado I had. When I hung up the phone, I turned to my friend Heath, and I think I said something like, hey! Let's go fuck that needle in the ass! <laughs> Scared, right? But I was full of bravado. I go, hey, you want to fucking, hey, Heath, you want to fucking, uh... And I hope I wasn't doing this. I go, hey, Heath, you want to fucking jump with me? And he was like, no. I said, why not? And he goes, well, for 16 seconds, your body's going to feel like it's dying, right? I said, yeah. He goes, yeah, that sounds terrible. I don't want to do that. He said, but I'll be sitting right there, drinking a beer, smoking a joint, waiting for you. I said, okay. So I start to walk under the needle. And here's what I decide. Fuck the bravado. What I decided in that moment was, bravado was me pretending to be somebody else. And in order for me to conquer this fear, I want to do it as me. So I'm just going to embrace this fear and see what happens, you know? And as soon as I let go of the bravado, one thing I did learn about myself is when I'm super scared, guys, my lower body sweats a lot. <laughs> a lot, like a lot, a lot, right? And so I was like, this is really a weird feeling, you know? But, I, but it actually felt good. I felt a lot, like present, I felt there. And I was like, fuck it. And nobody knows me in New Zealand. I'll be just some scared, sweaty American. They're gonna fucking love that, right? <laughs> so fine, just embrace this, get up there, conquer this fear, check this box, and let's move on to the next one. No one knows you here. You should feel the most comfortable. And I just hand this dude my ticket, and he goes, Josh Wolf. <laughs> and I looked at him, and I go, are you sure? <laughs> and he said, are you not sure? <laughs> I said, no, I'm sure. I said, how do you know me, man? He goes, I was at the comedy festival last night, dude. You're the whole reason I went. You're my favorite comic. I actually told everybody here about you. They're going to be so psyched to meet you. Hold on one second. Hey, <laughs> Semicircle around me, right? 
Now here's something you guys need to know about me. When I'm out in public and I'm nervous and I don't know what to do with my hands, I do this on my nipples. <laughs> so there's like 50 pictures of me with these people like, hey, hey, right? By the way, side note, side note, Probably about three or four times a year, I like to go to the casinos, take some mushrooms, and play the slots. And, and I'll tell you why, dude. It's just the simulation. The ding, 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 ah, And not too long ago, I was at the Mohegan Sun, which is a casino in Connecticut. Woo! And I was, dude, it was like 3.30 in the morning. I was on mushrooms. When I'm on mushrooms, I rub my nipples, too. <laughs> but not because I'm nervous, just because it fucking feels good. Uh, <laughs> And so, I was playing slots, and I, I hit like a $500 jackpot. It was fucking ring, 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 right? It's crazy, you know? And there was a dude sitting next to me, and I didn't notice he was there. And at one point, he looks at me, and he goes, hey. And I go, yeah. And he goes, he goes, you, you rub your nipples for good luck? I mean, what am I gonna do, say no? I, I, I. So I said, yeah. So me and this dude sat next to each other. <laughs> fucking rubbed our nipples like, yeah! At one point he was like, it's not working. I'm like, you gotta rub them harder. He's like, no. <laughs> Okay. So, they gotta make a little circle around me and, and the people there know I'm a comedian and they know I'm scared and, and they're making some jokes and I don't mind that shit, you know? And the guy standing next to me goes, all right everybody, enough of the jokes. Time to say goodbye to Josh. And I was like, <laughs> Goodbye. And he was like, it's just a saying. I go, fucking change it. <laughs> and he puts me in my little one suit, in my onesie, in my in my jumpsuit, you know? And uh, and he put a harness on me real loose. And he puts me in this elevator. And he goes, here you go. This elevator is gonna take you 700 feet very slowly, straight to the top. And the doors start to shut. And I go, well, aren't you getting in? He goes, no, just you. <laughs> elevator slowly rises out of the ground. And as it does, I look around and I realize that this elevator is like 80% glass. I don't like the window open on the fucking airplane, everybody. <laughs> But 80% glass, you know what that means, right? 20% wall. So I'm not kidding. When it lifted out of the ground, I turned around and I fucking Blair Witched myself right against the wall. I just sat like this. I put my face against the wall. I closed my eyes and I was like, this is it right here. I'm just threading this right here. And guys, I was like 75% sure I was gonna die. So I started talking to people in the elevator who I wanted them to hear from me one last time. Like I was talking to my parents like, mom and dad, thank you for always believing in me. Beth, you're the best decision I ever made. And Jacob and Caitlin and Trevor, you're my three heartbeats. How do I know I was screaming all of those embarrassing things? Well, apparently they videotape you. <laughs> Right when you walk in the elevator. Oh, a heads up would have been nice. A sign, smile, you're on camera, something. You know what it is? It's just a video of me screaming the bitchiest bitch shit any human has ever screamed. I was screaming things like, guys, I am on tape screaming this. If it's my time to go, I'm ready, but I'm not ready. So we get to the top, right? I get to the top, and the door opens. And at the top were these two young ladies. And one was this sarcastic, biting, say anything to your face, I don't give a shit about your feelings kind of person. And the other woman was exactly the same. <laughs> and I get up there, right? And they started laying into me immediately. The door opens and I just hear one of them go, well, come on out here, princess. <laughs> and I walk up to the desk and she hands me a clipboard. And she goes, here you go. 
I go, what's this? She goes, I need you to fill out this waiver. I was like, waiver? I said, what's this waiver for? And she said, you know what the waiver's for. And I was like, ha ha ha! I said, has anyone ever, has anyone ever had to use the waiver? She said, no. I said, well, that's good. She said, yeah. But their families did. What? Oh, she was fucking with me so hard. I appreciated it, but it was scary, you know? She goes, head out there. They're waiting for you. And I walk out on the deck. Now, has anyone in here ever been on top of one of the needles? The Strat in Vegas? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah. Did, you, did, it, did anyone jump? Nope. You jumped? No, I cried. Yeah, you go. So... <laughs> and did you? Skydive. You skydived? You skydived? Yeah, nah. <laughs> I will tell you, first of all, guys, one thing that, and anybody who's been on top of these needles will tell you, from the ground looking up, from the middle to the edge, looks huge. When you get up there, it's 15 feet max. And at the Strat, just like all these places, there's a railing that you would hold and you walk out to the edge, which is what I'm sure most normal people do. <laughs> Not your boy. I was so scared, guys. I'm 15 feet from the edge. Right when I get out there, I grab the railing with both hands like this. I'm squeezing it, white knuckling it, and I'm doing this with my feet. This feels safe, this is safe. This feels safe, this is safe, this feels safe. How do I know I was saying that? Oh, they videotaped that part too, that's right. I'm up there fucking safe, fucking safe, safe, fucking safe, safe. Guys, but can I tell you something? When I finally get down to the ground, the woman who sold me the tickets, she walks up to me and she goes, hey. I go, yeah, she goes, you want that video? I said, yeah, I want the video. She goes, okay. I hope you got a lot of room on your phone. I go, well, what? And she goes, well, what's the longest video I've ever had to send anybody? I go, well, how long's the average video? She goes, five and a half minutes. I go, well, how long was I up there? She said, 37 minutes. I said, no way. She goes, yeah, you did safe, safe for 17 minutes. Fuck it, safe, fuck it, safe, fuck it, safe, safe, fuck it, safe, safe. Were they watching in real time? How humiliating. I'm up there, fuck it, safe, fuck it, safe, safe. They're in the office like, ah, fuck it, safe, safe, fuck it, safe. And by the way, guys, there are two groups that they let up on that needle. The jumping group. The other group, they will let you do two things. They will let you walk along the edge by yourself. They say that cures your fear of heights. No, hey, fuck you, that's right. You know what else they'll do, dude? You ready for this? They'll attach a hook to your onesie, your jumpsuit, and they will hang you off the side. So you're flat looking down. Yo, dude, this guy walks up to me and he goes, hey, you want me to hang you off the side? And I was like, do you want me to shit in your mouth? Oh, I will shit up. I will beat gravity. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Have you not fucking say, fucking say, say, say? Read the room, bro. No, I do not want you to hang me off the side of this needle. I'm just trying to keep my shit together right now. You know what I mean? So the woman, the woman who was in charge of you know, get me out there. She goes, all right, come on, you gotta jump. I've been up there for at least 17 minutes. She was so sick of me at this point in time. She goes, come on, you gotta jump off of here. There's a line of people waiting to get up here, come on. And I go, well, what happens if I don't jump? She goes, what do you mean? I go, what happens if I get in that elevator, I ride it straight down, and just nobody ever knows. She goes, well, I mean, if you did that, somebody might tweet about it. <laughs> I said, are you telling me that if I don't jump off this needle, you're gonna tweet about it? She goes, no, I wouldn't. I think Twitter's stupid. I, I really think it's really dumb. I said, thank you. She said, of course. But she would, and her friend was like. <laughs> I said, can you help me? I'm just so scared. She goes, do you not, will you let me do my job? She said, do you think you're the first grown man I've had to talk off of this needle? <laughs> you're not. She goes, let me ask you a couple questions. Have you Googled us? I said, of course. 
She goes, this is your biggest fear? I said, it is. She goes, right. She said, when you Googled us, did you find anyone ever died here? I said, no. She goes, yeah. Has anyone ever been injured here? I said, no. She said, that's right. You are quite literally scared of nothing. <laughs> You're making things up to be scared of. Instead of making things up, let me just give you the facts. We've been here for years. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people jump off here every year. And nobody ever even gets hurt. We change lives. She goes, let me tell you something right now. When you jump off here, when you hit the ground, I go, hit the ground? <laughs> She was like, you know what I'm talking about. I said, I know you need to work on your messaging. That's what I know. <laughs> she said, you're gonna be a new person. You ready to be a new person? And I said, uh, no. <laughs> that's your pep talk? New person is your halftime speech? I go, that's not working for me. What else you got? She goes, okay. I was just throwing that one out. I got a couple more. She said, you got kids? I said, yeah. She goes, your kids know you're here? I said, yeah. She goes, you want to disappoint your kids? I said, I disappoint my kids all the time. What else? <laughs> Go fish. That shit doesn't work on me either. What else? <laughs> she said, all right. Your kids know you're scared? I said, of course. And she said, do you want your kids to know that it's okay to quit in life when they're scared? Yes. And I was like, oh, I want to fucking push you off here so bad. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want that. She said, of course you don't. She said, get up there. And I get up to the edge. And I stand there. And guess what, scared of heights people? It's not real until you hear your very first <laughs> And my man, that is followed quickly by boom, boom. <laughs> And she <laughs> tightened up my harness. Tight! I'm not gonna lie to you, she squished my left nut. And on a normal day, I'd have told her to loosen that up. But looking 700 feet straight down, I'll be all one nut Josh. I don't give a shit. It's better than being all dead Josh. That's what I'll tell you what right now. And what a great story to tell your grandkids. Hey, how'd you lose, how'd you lose your nut, Pop Pop? It exploded in midair, kids, you know? So I'm standing there, and something happened to me that I'd only heard about. You guys heard the term frozen with fear? I didn't think that was a real thing until I couldn't move my fucking body. And I just I had to tell her. I said, listen, I want to tell you something for real. No fucking around. I have to do this today. This is why I'm here. I cannot let my fear beat me today. Of course I don't want to disappoint my kids, but the real reason I'm here is she's right. I grew up with a lot of irrational fears. And I promised myself I would not hang those, hand those down to my kids. And the only way for me not to hand this down is to do this today, right now. I have to show them that there's nothing to be scared of. But I can't jump. <laughs> I said, you're going to have to push me. <laughs> and she looked at me and she goes, I know. <laughs> I said, you know. She goes, yeah, we watched your elevator right up. I knew I was going to have to push it. <laughs> Are they watching the fuck? Ah! <laughs> so I go, okay. But by the way, scared ice people, guess what? If they push you, you have to go off backwards. You have to see the push. They can't push you in the back. It's against the law. So I turn around. She starts to walk at me like this. <laughs> And I was like, are you out of your fucking mind right now? You think I'm gonna let you push me like you're one of the walking dead? Get your shit together. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to plan this out. Look, man, I grew up with three older brothers, man. A lot of us who grew up with the youngest of a big family, there's some PTSD that's involved with that shit. <laughs> one of my things is I was scared multiple times every day. So that means if you scare me to this day, I'm gonna jazz it. <laughs> Not only am I on a jazz hand, it's gonna be followed by this noise. Ah! 100% uh, of the time. 100% of the time, right? I already have fucking tape tape. Ah! I don't want to go with it, you know what I mean? So don't you surprise me off this fucking needle now. Get me a good push. 
I go, one, two, three, push. You ready? She goes, I'm ready. I go, you ready? She goes, I'm ready. And I go, one. And right it was. She just goes, one, like that. She was so sick of me being up there, guys. If she was allowed to scream, one, you pussy, one. You know, I could tell she was sick of me. When she pushed me, she didn't look at me, guys. When you check the camera, she pushed me when she was already walking back to the office. And in the camera, after she pushed me, she gave me three of these, just like that. Oh, and on my phone, I have a 16 second video. So I get down to the bottom. And uh, the woman who so, so, said the video joke comes up and she goes, hey, hey, CEO wants to talk to you. You got a minute? I said, yeah. And he comes up to me, he goes, hey man, Tim. I go, hey, I'm Josh. And he said, first of all, how great was that? I was like, pretty fucking terrible. <laughs> he was like, but you're gonna do it again. I go, no. And he goes, are you glad you did it? I said, I'm so glad I did it. And please thank your staff. They were very patient with me. <laughs> and, I, and I was about to walk away. He goes, hey, I just want you to know, me, everybody in the office, we really enjoyed your video. And I was like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so I'm home a month later in the States. And my buddy from New Zealand, Heath, he calls me. And he goes, hey, man. I go, hey. He goes, hey, have you? Have you been on that New Zealand joke website? And I said, no. And he goes, you should. And I said, what am I looking for? He goes, you're looking for a video. I go, where is it? He goes, it's right on the front page. So I go to the front page, and there's a video of the CEO. And at the beginning of the video, he's just giving all the vital information about the 700 feet, 16 second fall where it is in downtown Auckland, what you can see when you're at the top, all the vital information. And at the very end he goes, but most importantly guys, what you need to know is here at New Zealand Jump, we've had zero fatalities. Here at New Zealand Jump, we've had zero injuries. What you need to know is that New Zealand Jump is 100% and then it just cut to a video of me going, save, 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 save. <laughs> Titties. That's how big her titties were. They made that noise through the air.